Um, so what we're going to do today is bottom side control attacks. I call it the spallic lock because I learned this when I was blue belt. The initial move that I'm going to show you I learned from a big round brown belt. He's black belt now, but a big round black belt who could invert and did all kinds of really unorthodox stuff. I really love the weird stuff, right? And so um, I took that, I started playing with it, getting really good at it. People were responding to it, doing different um, responses. And so I had to modify it. So now it's, it's kind of become a system. And so I'm gonna show you that system today. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm just gonna show you top person's roll. This is all you're gonna do. You're gonna start in side control. Um, attacks from the bottom are great because this is, for me, I feel like side control is the fucking worst, right? Nobody wants to be in bottom side control. So in bottom side control, especially in, in no gi, but also in the gi, right? When we go to north-south, it's a very common uh, action when you're in top side control, start going for chokes. When you go to north-south, you usually bring this arm over, this arm to the hip. You start making your way over here, all right? So that's top person's role, just to, to get that out of the way. We're gonna go into the spallic lock, right? Let me, let me have my good side first. <laughs> all right. Uh, feel free to move around if you can't see the details. Um, this works both uh, gi and no gi. It works really good in the gi because you can have a nice handle hold with the, the sleeve. But I like to teach it no gi because there's a lot of leg spaghetti that goes on and it's easier to see when you can see my legs, right? And so Alan is in top side control. I'm getting smashed. This sucks. He's going to start migrating to north-south. So he brings this arm over and he brings this arm to the other side before he starts moving his hips. Now, as soon as he brings this arm over, I like to just hug it. All right, I'm not keeping it tight to me because anytime I, I put any kind of energy into it, he's gonna think, oh, there's something here and then he's gonna retract it. I want him to be nice and comfortable here. And just a nice little hug, really calm. This other hand, as soon as that hand goes to my hip, this other hand dives down underneath. And so we're gonna turn this a little bit like this. So you'll see my other hand dove underneath, kind of like a, a ghost escape if you're gonna do one of those. I'm gonna find his wrist. How do I find his wrist? 100% of the time, it's gonna be at the end of the arm. So just follow it to the end of the arm, okay? Now, when I'm on bottom side control, so really any time you're on a bottom position, whether you're in guard or you're in a defensive position like this, you never wanna be flat on your back with all four points of your back on the mat, all right? Um, so your, your rib cage is designed in a very specific way. It can take a lot of force and a lot of impact on the sides here. It's built to protect your internal organs in this general region. It's weaker here because it allows for the expansion for your breath, right? So if I'm flat on my back, Alan's able to just really put a lot of pressure here and really constrict my back or um, my breath. As soon as I get to one hip and one shoulder, I don't even have to be completely perpendicular to the mat. But as soon as I get to one hip and one shoulder, now the sides of my rib cage are taking his weight and taking his force, right? And so keep that in mind. Anytime you're on bottom, bottom anything, right, in jujitsu, we never want to be flat on our back waiting for something to happen. We're always on one side, one side. We're moving through that, that full back position, right? I'm never going to say never, but most of the time, you never want to be on your back, right? So as soon as he goes to that position, right, I cover, I'm turning just a little bit to my side. That's also going to enable you a little bit of space in order to do this leg spaghetti, all right? So the bottom leg, this one, the one that's closest to the mat, is going to bend, and you want your shin right behind the elbow here. As soon as I get in, into the elbow, I'm pulling that wrist towards me. Again, if you have a knee, go ahead and grab the sleeve and really pull it towards you as I'm driving my knee forward, all right? What that does is if he's really tight against the top of my butt, you saw my voice change, as soon as I drive him down my body, this is critical, this is one of the, the troubleshooting uh, points that I, I often get when I teach you this seminar, is they for, people forget to drive them down the body. I want him down and closer to my legs. Now what I'm doing with my legs is I'm not straightening, right? I'm not creating a single line. I wanna keep my heel to my ass 
as I throw my knee forward. So I'm creating a straight line from my knee to my shoulder here. Does everybody remember this dance? Yes. Yeah. That's what we're doing, all right? But without holding our, our, our ankle. We wanna keep that ankle straight and we're driving through the hip, creating that nice long line. His arms here, his arms attached to his body. And so he's gonna move down my body as I do this, all right? So we're here, we captured the wrist, shin to the inside of the elbow. I drive him down my body. I'm staying on my side. I'm not rolling to my back. If you roll to your back, those with limited hip mobility are gonna have even more limited hip mobility. So kind of stay on your side like this. Now you're just gonna cover over top of your knee. So I'm over the arm, settling on the knee. And now you're going to extend your legs straight, all right? So we extended our knee first. We got to this position. We extend our leg. What that's gonna create is a room, an opportunity for my toes to dive under. I'm diving behind my, my own knee. I'm pulling that wrist up and I'm planting it, all right? Depending on your hip mobility, you may be able to get a full lotus clamp, perfect. If you do that, in that case, you don't really need this hand. You can use it for other shit, all right? If you don't have the hip mobility, just go ahead and clamp as high as you can. Keep the wrist if you feel like it's not there. This is where we're going to get to, and then we'll continue on, all right? But I want everybody facing the ass. I want you on your side, all right, this entire move. So once again, we'll do it a little bit different angle for everybody. He's in side control. This sucks. Fuck get to my side as he's coming to north-south. So this hand goes over my face to the opposite side of my body, casually covering it. I don't want to scare him. You know, he's like a nice, sensitive child. You don't want to scare him. I grab that wrist. I want to stick my shin to the inside of his, or his elbow, and I'm driving him down my body. Outside leg. You'll see I still, I kind of turn to my back. Go ahead and make that adjustment. Leg, top leg, head side leg, however you want to uh, think of it, goes and covers the, the inside of the knee. Now I'm straightening the, the bottom leg enough. You might have to do a little bit of a side crunch to get more arm, but I'm going to dive my toes in. They're going to remain behind my knee. I'm going to pull the wrist up to the inside of my knee, all right, before I clamp. And then we stop here, all right? One more direction. Right, he comes to north-south, gently cover, capture the wrist. I'm on my side, shin to the inside of the elbow, drive him down my body, cover over top of his arm, settle on the inside of my knee. Now I'm gonna straighten my knee as I extend my, or drop my toes inside, but behind my bottom knee. I'm pulling that wrist up, and then I'm adjusting and getting that lotus grip, all right? So without a body, do. Do, 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 extend, drive. And you're, you end up kind of in this, this position like this. It's gonna make more sense when you have a body in there. All right, cool? Questions? You're gonna get a lot of these intro, this, this beginning part in. We're just, I wanna get everybody on the same page before we start continuing to the submissions. Cool? One, two, three. We learn more from our fuck ups than we do our successes. Right? But now that you've kind of been like, oh God, let's take a little bit shorter or a longer look at it. All right? So as soon as we get here, everybody's getting here fine, cool. And we're turning to our side, we want this, and we're straightening that leg out. Very important, we need that space right here because if he's way up here, it's gonna be really hard to do anything. All right? So I want him that tension, I want him down here, all right? so that I can still breathe normally and he's pretty stuck. I'm doing these opposing tensions with my shin pointed down and, my, and I'm pulling his hand up, right? Still trying to stay on my side. The more you're on your side, the less hip mobility you're gonna need, right? So we come over and I'm clamping over, right? If you can only clamp here, that's fine, keep the wrist. If you can do a full lotus clamp, <laughs> then I can use these hands for other things, right? So one more time, we're here, 
over top, extend that. I'm trying to keep this the entire time. If you lose it, I'm gonna lose the entire move. So I'm extending, and you're gonna to have to do a side crunch depending on how short your arms are or how limited your flexibility is. Boom, pull, lock. We got that? Everybody's like, oh, well, we'll see. We'll see, one, two, three. So many reps of the intro today that I'm going to get to each of you. All right, but let's let's continue on. So we're gonna do. Um, so before we start with uh, the first submission, it's very critical that you understand that the first submission is the shoulder lock. All shoulder locks work the same way. I have a very principle-based understanding of jiu-jitsu. If you understand how one set and category of, of submissions or techniques works. You can modify it and do it anywhere in the world or anywhere around the body. So with arm bars, we have three components necessary for an arm bar. You wanna isolate the shoulder, you wanna isolate the wrist movement, and you're exerting pressure in the opposite direction of the elbow, all right? Elbow bends this way, does not bend this way. <coughs> Every arm bar is gonna work that same way. So if you find that you can't get an arm bar, it's because you're missing one of these three components. Whenever there's an arm bar, there's also a shoulder lock because with a shoulder lock, you have isolation of the shoulder, you have isolation of the wrist, and you have a 90 degree angle, right? And a, any shoulder lock is a hyper rotation of the shoulder and the shoulder joints. Because this angle is a critical piece to any kind of shoulder lock. If he has a long arm and he rotates that shoulder, he's got a lot of rotation. There's about 190 degrees of rotation here. If he has a 90 degree angle in the arm, he has less rotation. See how his body had to move to accommodate for that rotation in the shoulder? If you fucking chicken wing that shit, oh, there's a little bit. So you really don't need much at all. That's why it's so critical. As soon as I get that leg or that arm locked up and that those toes fed through, I pull that wrist to me because that's gonna create that very acute angle that we need for minimal energy and finishing the shoulder lock, right? Keep that in mind, right? So we got here, we drive down, very critical. We come through, important, keep the wrist. If you need to go to the end of the hand to get more leg, more room for your toes, say you have big fucking paddle feet, right? Grab the end of the, the hand, dive it underneath. I pull this wrist, look at that angle. That's a really tight angle. As soon as I clamp, yes, you may end up getting like some sort of calf slicer. No, he's not in calf. All right, but <laughs> it's there if you want. It's not a high percentage, but the, the better one is the shoulder lock. So now I'm just gonna hyper rotate the shoulder and the shoulder joint, just using my hips. So you can keep the hand if you want, if you want, if you need to, if you have a really nice lotus clamp, you don't necessarily need to. And now my hips are facing towards his legs. I'm just gonna turn, turn, turn and faces his, his head. Be very gentle about this. Shoulder locks, I think, are probably one of the most dangerous submissions in the arsenal, just because they can come on so fucking fast. If he's smart, we'll pretend. If he's smart, <laughs> and he recognizes that I'm trying to hyper-rotate that shoulder and the shoulder joint, he's gonna roll. I'm just gonna roll up with him. If I maintained that lock, that spallic lock, I'm just gonna keep rotating it, all right? If your opponent is limber enough, don't roll if they're, they're gonna get a problem, all right? So turn, shin, elbow, drive. Casually cover, right? Do that side crunch. Whatever you can do, extend this leg. Drop the toes in, bring the toes back behind the knee. Pull that shit. Make sure that it's a really acute angle with his arm. Lotus, if you can get it. There are a lot of flexible people in this class. You can get that lotus grip. You have a nice clamp. If you can get calf over the wrist, he's not going anywhere. He cannot fight that. And then I can use this to do anything I want. Boom, boom, whatever you want. I'm gonna turn, he gets the tap. If he's smart and limber enough, he's gonna roll, I'm gonna roll with him. If you lose it, Cool. Okay, well look where I'm at. All right. We got that. All right. Let's try that. That's a 
That's the very first simple submission. Let's try to get some rounds. I'll come to whoever needs that, that intro, a little bit of extra work on the intro, and then we'll get to the fun shit. Yeah, one, two, three. Keep the intro. Like, if, if I didn't get to you, you're still struggling, I will get to you, all right? Um, keep doing that first one if you feel like you haven't gotten it, because that one's like the 101. That's by plan A. I'm gonna do that. But sometimes I do this too often with somebody, and they, they just don't like it. <laughs> So they get smart. <laughs> I'm giving you tons of compliments today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Friends like you. All right. So one of the common, and it's gonna, as soon as, if you rep this out enough, right? As soon as he goes to that side control, right? He goes to side control, go ahead. <coughs> right? It's gonna go on that class, right? Now, he's smart. He knows that I'm trying to hyper-rotate the shoulder to shoulder joint. To prevent that happening, he's going to grab the inside of the leg, right? So I don't have this anymore. I don't have the lock. I can't turn because he's locked his arm into the structure of his body. And so that's going to prevent me from getting this shoulder lock. No problem. And this is where I want this arm here. I want him to be real nice and comfortable here. I don't want him to bring this arm to the other side. I'm gonna release this because I don't need to hold it anymore. He's holding his own leg. So for me to hold his hand and for him to hold his leg, it's redundant, right? I can use this for something else. So I'm gonna extract it. I'm gonna push on his hip. I wanna straighten my body enough so that I can escape my bottom leg through. <coughs> through his body. I'm still holding on to that arm. I like to stamp on that, that leg, you know, just as a, a, a safety sock. Then I'm releasing his leg, pulling that arm, fucking snapping that on, right? This turns into the tightest fucking triangle, that little pivot. And because I've been dragging his arm with me the entire time, it just slots right where it needs to be, all right? Can we get in here? Right. Drop. See that extended leg? That's where everybody's getting a little bit rung up, all right? As soon as that leg's extended, pull tight. Get it tight. I'm going to try for that first one, but he's smart. He grabs it inside. I can't do it, right? Extract the hand. Push against the hip. Create some space. You might have to push against the knee. It's a little bit more accessible. That bottom leg comes underneath. Sneak it through, right? Stop on the hip if you can. If he doesn't release it, he's gonna release it. <laughs> he's going to, all right? Just slap it on. Look at that nice angle, all right? Lock it up. Because I've been pulling that arm the entire way through, it just, you pivot so nicely. And it's pretty. It's really, really satisfying when you get this. All right? Do we need to see it again? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Right here. All right. He goes to north south, right? I lock in the spell, or even halfway through the lock. If he grabs your thigh, just know that I want this at the very least. I want those toes inside. He grabs the inside of my thigh or his thigh. I extract. I push. I sneak. I stop. I whip around. All right. Cool. Can try it. One, two, three. Um, I've done this multiple times at various academies and, and various globe trotters, and like the questions are amazing. I love getting asked questions because it makes me a better teacher. You know, I'm able to see what what are the problems people are going to have. You're never going to be the only person having that problem. I guarantee you. So never hesitate to ask about this. All right. So um, before we continue to the next one, I'm just going to give a little quick tutorial on how to finish a triangle right, all right? I do it a little bit differently, um, but when you, you do it correctly, it's it's like you can pop somebody's head off. Let me borrow a normal <laughs> size person. Um, <laughs> just because it's easier to like... I don't know. <laughs> Right? We end up, let me just go from the very beginning. <laughs> we get here, he defends, 
Makes sense, right? I'm bringing this over. All right. Now, whenever you have a triangle guard, you know, this is your safeguard. Go to triangle guard. Even if you don't have it locked completely up, get here first. Your hand, the one that's not controlling the other arm, sometimes we don't even need to control the other arm. Just use your belly rolls. That'll stick that arm pretty good, right? I'm between the ear, between my knee, I'm grabbing the shin. Try not to grab the feet. If he's really big and strong and he starts, he decides he's gonna fucking posture up, you're gonna end up tweaking something in your foot. That sucks. You wanna grab your shin, right? I am parallel with him. I wanna be perpendicular at this 45. And 45s are a beautiful angle in Jiu Jitsu. Try 45s wherever you are, right? So I wanna get to that 45. So I'm grabbing my shin. You can stomp on the hip. I like the hip because I can stay really nice and tight with him. Or you can stomp on the, the floor, whatever you need. If you have long legs, two details for you. You are not gonna lock here. You are gonna lock up here because you gotta take that leg out, right? You're also gonna have a lot of space here. I do what I call a ratchet. So keeping the shin, I lift up. I move over, I take that space away. And now look at his body, it's all fucked up. Perfect, clamp it down, lock it. Four things simultaneously, four things, all right? I'm pinching my knees, I'm lifting my hips, I'm pulling his head down, and the fourth and final one that is gonna kill people is I'm driving this heel down to the mat, all right? It is gonna give you the nastiest triangle. All right, if you do those four things at once, just make sure you take all that space out. So up, over, fuck up his base, lock it up, pinch, hips, head, and heel. Boom. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so if you're doing that second one and you wanna rep it a little bit more, be very aware of those, those details with the triangle. Triangle is like, it is, for me, it's the most beautiful submission if you do it right, all right? This last bit, and it kind of leads into yesterday's uh, uh, class, all right? So, he has been arm barred too much, or uh, he's been shoulder locked too much. He knows I have this triangle. As soon as I, I start going here, he's gonna back the fuck out. Perfect. I wanna face plant him, all right? Just fucking palm him into the face, or into the mouth. I'm palming him into the mat. I'm keeping, that keeps his posture down. Get up to your, your elbow, get up to your hand, swivel your hips. And then we're in this crucifix position. If you came to yesterday's class, you know, you're looking at your manicure, you're rolling through, right? And you're attacking all kinds of things, right? That's awesome. So, I know, right? <laughs> so, you need to get at least the toes. That was another question. It's like, what if I can't get the toes? Fucking work it, try to work it as much as possible. You may still get this with just the heel, but the toes are gonna give you a higher percentage, right? He knows what's up, <coughs> boom. Drive him down before he, he backs out all the way. You see him on my, my hand or my elbow? Get up to your hand, hoop weight into him. As I swivel to my knees, I have his leg clamped. I'm going to clamp his hand, all right? Maybe I'm going to sit back this time and choke him out, arm bar him, or do all kinds of crazy shit. Cool? One more time. Let's go this way. Okay. In, in, he defends, boom. <clears throat> Got it? All right, let's play with it. That's the last one. Um, Let's get some reps in, and then we'll bring it back, and I'll do just a quick review on everything we learned. One, two, three. I like to end my classes just a review of everything we did, because an hour is a long time. You're so focused on the last move that you forget, oh, what, what did we do first? I try to set it up so you keep doing the first thing over and over and over again, but we're just, it's, it's good to review the details. All right, so let's go here so we're in front of the camera. All right. So side control, this sucks. Let me go to the other side. <laughs> so side control, this sucks. Especially Nogi, he's gonna go to north-south. He's gonna bring this, this top leg over my head. I'm gonna casually wrap it. I'm not gonna scare him. This bottom hand goes to the wrist. It's gonna be there. It's at the end of the arm. Just find it there. 
you're gonna turn to your side. We wanna be on our side, even though we're not completely perpendicular, we're not very strong when we're here flat on our back. Also, if you have limited flexibility, limited hip mobility, you're not gonna be able to get that leg up high enough to, to get the spallop lock in. And so we turn to our side. Our shin goes to the inside of the, the elbow and we're driving down, keeping our, our heel to our abs, all right? That's gonna drive them down my body. I'm still keeping this arm. I come over top of this arm, step on my own knee. Now I'm doing a bit, little bit of a side bend to get to lengthen that bottom leg, diving my toes underneath, the toes go behind my own knee. I pull that wrist up so I get that nice and cute angle. And then if I can, I'm gonna clamp that, that calf over top of this wrist. One is we have this, this shoulder lock, which is a hyper rotation of the shoulder and the shoulder joint. All I'm gonna do, if I need to, I keep that wrist. If I don't, I'm gonna release it and I'm gonna roll towards his head. If he's smart, he's gonna roll with me. I just follow him. I'm gonna roll and keep rotating it to get the finish on top. He's smart. So as soon as he recognizes that that is a shoulder lock, let's turn this way, right? He recognizes that that is a shoulder lock, he's gonna grab his own thigh. Cool, I'm gonna release his, this hand because it's redundant, he's holding on to it himself. I'm gonna use this hand to push against his hip. If I need to, push against his knee. I'm straightening my back, but I'm keeping a hold of this arm. Now I'm gonna sneak the bottom leg through, I'm gonna stop here, and then I'm gonna whip it around. To finish it really super tight, I'm gonna take that space away from between my knee and the other side of my leg. So I ratchet up, I pull it across, I fuck up his base, I lock it down, and I lock it. Four things at once, I'm gonna release so he doesn't die. I wanna pinch my knees, lift my hips, pull his head down, and this heel just drives down to the mat. That's gonna give you the tightest triangle ever, right? He's been shoulder locked and he's been triangle way too many times. As soon as I dive those, those toes in, he's gonna start extracting himself. I'm face palming, so this head side, this body side uh, hand is popping him down into the mat. I wanna control his posture so that I can get up onto my elbow, get up onto my hand, rotate to my knees, and then I'm getting into my crucifix position. I can do the fancy roll or I can sit back and start attacking crucifix, All right? This is a fun series. I highly encourage that everybody keeps drilling it, practicing it. If you have to, practice on a, an unsuspecting white belt, right? Until you get really good and then start working your way through the ranks. There you go. All right? <laughs> um, everybody in here, and I cannot stress enough, everybody in here has a very different body type. I mean, except for me and him. Like, we have the same body type, right? <laughs> So you are going to have to modify stuff that you learn, everything you learn. You're going to have to find those little details that you have to tweak in order to make it more efficient for you, all right? Do it. Don't think that, that how I do it is the way that you have to do it. Make those modifications. Decide if this is something you want to add into your game or not. I'm not going to be upset, right? If you do add it to your game, if you do happen to pull it off in a tournament, fucking send me a message. I love that shit, all right? But be creative. You don't have to be a black belt to innovate. I learned that first thing when I was a blue belt, and then through up until I was a black belt, I started creating this system. I was using this already as a brown belt, right? You do not have to be a black belt to innovate. You can be a white belt, not knowing shit, right? Please try to know at least guard, you know, before you start innovating. But <laughs> if you find yourself somewhere where you're like, I don't know what to do, where to go. <sighs> fucking make it up. Make it up, all right? The worst that can happen is that you have to tap. Oh, big deal, all right? Something is gonna be right until it's wrong. So just try it. You're gonna find out very quickly whether it's right or it's wrong, right? Uh, thank you guys. This was my, my last class of the week. I'm going to be back um, it, towards the end of the week, but I just want to thank you guys for, for coming to my class, for sharing your energy, for sharing your questions, right? Like I said, this makes me a very, a better instructor. I bring all this stuff to other people, all your questions, all your troubleshooting, right? So keep asking those questions. That's going to make you a better grappler. Um, so thank you and enjoy the rest of your week.